With all of the other lords declaring for Stannis Baratheon, the Queen of Thorns isn't pleased. We have to expand our influence in this challenge on the King's Court track by winning battles and proving that the Tyrells are not traitors. This is Legendary Tactics. Okay, so the backstory here. Stannis is apparently the man, but the Queen of Thorns is not having it. So this match is a little bit different than the rest because we need to prove ourselves by having enough armies and enough money to uh, not be invaded. So in order to do that, we need to rise up at the King's Court track. We start in sixth, dead last, and every battle we win will take us one higher. So you can see that we are not ranked very highly anywhere. Um, not too bad, we got a second place there, that's decent. Uh, but the Iron Throne we're also last in, so. I guess my goal here will be to capture some fortresses, expand my armies so that I can grow and become a little more powerful. I'm going to need to have well-supported troops because I have to win battles either in defense or on offense. And to beat this quickly, I'd like to beat this by turn three or four if possible. Um, I'm going to need to be ready for a defense. So I think the Dornish Marshes are a great place to defend from actually because you can cover a lot of territory and there's going to be a lot of hostile troops around there. So my goal will be to get some territory, defend and dig in, and then try to pick off some troops here and there who are left exposed. I don't want to attack the big strongholds and I don't want to attack giant armies because I have to win a lot of battles which means I'm gonna to have to cycle through my entire hand so this is the second of the Tyrell challenges you've uh, may have seen some of our other videos we've uh, taken on all of the challenges so far except for the uh, the iron challenges the gray joys so we'll get over to the reach so that we can possibly grow our army I'd like to build in High Garden as well. Tyrells are known for their strength in High Garden. So I'm completely fine with seeing these other powers fight because it means they're going to be weaker when I take them on. But yes, uh, House Tyrell is it's one of the great houses of the Seven Kingdoms and uh, Liege Lords of the Reach. And they're really wealthy. The only house that's actually wealthier than them are the Lannisters, which means the Tyrells can field some of the biggest armies and they can also call on the ships of the Redwind Fleet. Those are the lords of the Shield Islands and the Coastal Lords, so they can basically command a navy that equals or even surpasses that of King's Landing. I don't want to fight too many battles against King's Landing because that would mean I would need to dive right into the heart there. And I don't really want to do that. I mean, heading up to River Run isn't in my interest, so... I'm thinking if I get this fleet out to sea, it's a, oh, early on it's a hard choice if you mobilize your armies and, and extend your supply lines, or if you get into position. So I think I'm going to move out to the West Summer Sea. And that way, if I put a defend order in, I can defend High Garden, I can defend Starfell, and I can also get troops down to Starfell so I can uh, launch an attack there. If I can ever get a catapult, that would make my attack down there a lot more powerful. So here we go, the Throne of Blades. So they get to decide and they're giving us troops. So this bodes well for my plan to expand my army. And I know all the rest are expanding their army, but that doesn't matter because my idea is to just focus on their weak points. Okay, so Starfall actually, I think I can probably conquer that. That shouldn't be an issue. Wow, there's a lot of troops going down, but getting one in the reach, that's good. Fortifies my front lines. That siege engine can do nicely on the offensive. So we'll do that. Oh, okay. So bidding, I don't have a lot to bid, but I mean, I'm, I, I can't use these points to bid on the third track, so I might as well scatter them through it. The first, wow, I won it with a single influence point, so I get to decide the winner outside of combat, so I can use that to my advantage. Usually um, the Starks, I like to put them higher on the track because they really don't have any bearing on me whatsoever, so I don't mind if they're a little more powerful. 
and they blew a ton of influence there so um, I get to drag these to decide who's going to win and you know this is looking pretty good I don't really want Lannister being strong beside me but Baratheon I'm also probably going to fight him too so um, we'll probably just let's just leave that as is Ooh, the wildlings okay not really worth putting too much in here um, unless it allows me to move up on a track by winning so I'll put one in get the league minimum but nothing happens so that was a bit wasted That's all right. You can't know that in advance. So, so I'll get that support order in. So if I do need it either defensively or offensively, a second support order here will cover two sets of armies as well. So Highgarden is actually doubly defended now. Hopefully he tries to expand his influence there and I can, I can burn him with a raid. I should, cons I should have maybe considered moving him. But, uh, ah, retrospect is 2020, so unfortunately nobody to burn. So that is an unsuccessful raid. And yes, I probably should have moved him and, and gone for an attack, but Kingswood might have been a good place to challenge him. But he may actually challenge me yet, so that's fine. So High Garden, I've got that catapult, so I can actually... Attack down to Starfalls. I think that he's only three and I've got a five there, so. Yeah, that, that looks worthy. And the question is, do I leave High Garden empty and go for it? I think so. I think at this point I need to ensure I get the win. You don't want to cheap out, leave the one footman behind and then lose by one. And this way it might enable me to use a slightly lower card and save my higher cards for other battles so yeah that's a five to two puts me up to six to two with my naval support six to three okay so i'll just check what the difference is his highest card is a four so his highest possible score is a seven there so i could win it with a two and I can kill one of his armies off, which softens him up and makes it easier for me to take him out later. So I think I'll try to do that. All right. Littlefinger's super impressed with my abilities. Thanks, Littlefinger. Yeah, overall, this digital game, I've been really impressed with it. It's a lot of fun. This challenge, uh, it only took me two tries uh, to beat this one. Um, after this one is over, I'm going to post my first one because something was odd about th that game and I think it glitched at the end. So I want to post and, and if you wouldn't mind giving me your comments or ideas of what happened there, tell me if you think it's a glitch or if there's something I'm not seeing. Okay, so four to four here. Got a decent defense. Lannister, always good to check what he's at. Wow, so he can get right up to the four there. So he can get up to eight. Um, so you know what? I'm going to go all in. And that takes the win. Okay, so that gets me up to the fourth spot on the King's Court track. I just need three more victories to seal the deal. But uh, so, yeah, at the end of this video, I will show you uh, the previous one. And, uh, and please weigh in in the comments below and let me know. Um, what the heck happened because there was some weird glitch with I fought the wildlings and I was in third on the track and then I dropped to fourth because the Greyjoys moved up and then suddenly I ended up winning somehow and so I didn't think that was legitimate so I played this one again but um, of all the challenges this one um, this one was probably the least challenging I would have to say but uh, just in case anyone's struggling with it out there you never know sometimes you just go at it the wrong way and you don't uh, don't have a good angle of attack so maybe this will give you some ideas about how to challenge how to take on this challenge or maybe you just want to see how somebody else tackled it okay good so here's uh, a defense I can put up three to three so this is very much about um, oh and I've got my support from the Dornish marches so this is very much about uh, choosing the right card so you don't overextend but you don't underextend I mean I want to get that victory Right, so I think I better put my three down. So I did overkill there, but uh, got another victory, edging ever closer, two more. A 
Estro's mustering. Yes, that's exactly what I need. So that's brilliant. Now I can restock. Another siege engine might be useful if I end up needing to attack a castle to get a win. Um, the knight is nice and flexible too, and he could join the other two and, and really solidify that. But uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go with the siege engine. Okay. I think we just need maybe an extra footman. Or uh, no, we'll just upgrade because my uh, supply lines can't accommodate too many more. So we'll upgrade both of those. I'm mostly going to keep them together, so often I would I would get another footman in there if I wanted to spread my reach, but I'm actually thinking I want to finish this fairly quickly. So, no sense dilly-dallying. Back to the Iron Throne. I've only got two to spend. So if I throw one into each of these, I should actually consider saving one for fighting the Wildlings, but you know what? I think I can steal both of the first two tracks. And if I do, I break ties on the battles, or I get the extra point to throw in when I need it, and that could be really vital with the Valyrian Steel in order to get the, the final win, because I'm really whittling down. I've only got zeros, ones, and twos left for cards, so I'm, I'm very conscious. I, I may need to actually throw a few fights in order to cycle those cards around and get my big, big hitter out. Mace needs to get back to the battle. Ooh, okay, we got a victory. Wow, so the highest bidder moves to the top of one of the influence tracks of his choice. So there's where I could have, if I had won that, I would have broken that tie, would have given it to myself, and I could have finished the game right there if I'd only saved the one. But uh, oh, that was a good try anyway. So uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to let uh, the Starks choose. They'll likely bump me in the Valerian Steel. Yes, they did. So I no longer get that bonus, but... Uh, that could have been a lot worse, so. Okay, so let's do a, a March special order. Whew. The question is, do I do I try to fortify or do I go for the win here? And I think I'm gonna go all in. See, nobody's in range to, to battle there, but what I could do is hope that he comes into range and then I attack him. Those guys, I think, I mean, there's so many troops around, I better go for the, the special order, we'll get the extra attack there. Oh, I'm kind of torn if I want to expand or not. Sure, let's let's march there. Who knows? I may need may need to battle. And do I march there? Oh, I probably should march, but I'm just so torn because I really want to get that extra troop on there and muster down there. That would really ensure it next turn. I'm probably gonna get raided. This is this is probably not a great idea, but uh, no guts, no glory. Okay, so that guy's in an ideal position to support because he can support an attack on the bone way. He can support high garden and he can support the reach if I get attacked in any of those. So that's a fantastic support order there. Triple power. I've got my fleet. I did choose my fleet to support Starfall, didn't I? Sure hope so. Yeah, so he raided me there. That was that was a boneheaded play on my part. Hmm. I think here I need to cycle my cards a bit. So I'm high garden. I may need to lose a battle there in order to win one later. I think I can I can win with the reach. I've got enough power here. Probably don't want to take on Kingswood the six. King's Landing not so much. So do I double back and hit the Lannisters or do I go for the bone? I think the bone way. I can take those guys. Not a problem. Five to two, plus I get the support. Six to two, this should be an easy fight. Six, three, and his highest possible is seven. If he goes all in, so I better go for the eight. I can kill two of them off as long as he doesn't defend one, and he did defend one, so I've killed one. Which is actually better because now I've got another single troop there. Unless he, oh no, he's got a retreat. Where is he going? Okay, down there. So see, I should have done Starfell. 
attack order because then I could have attacked that guy and taken him out. That just means we're going to have to get creative here. So I think quite easily this challenge could be beaten in three turns. I could have beaten it twice this time. Um, but we'll hang in there and we'll finish this deal. And if I really feel ambitious later, I'll come back and beat it quicker. I sense that I am almost there anyways, so... Yes, here comes the attack. Okay, so I'm outgunned here and I've got just the low cards left. So he's going to he's going to beat me. But again, it'll help me cycle some of those cards through. I'm probably going to lose my siege engine. Yeah, just by one too bad. That's a shame. But we will retreat to Prince's Pass. That gets me closer to my other troops anyways, so I can solidify it. You know what? At this point, I don't think I need to grow. I just need one victory. So this isn't a traditional game where you need to extend your reach and get your supply and, you know, go in for the long term. It's just a short term goal to win a single battle. So. Let's hope I get attacked one more time and maybe I can salvage it in the third round. Ooh, they're starting to get a little bit stronger there. Not so keen on that. Oh good, yeah, I like to get rid of that patch face card too. That one, that can be really deadly because you've saved up and suddenly you lose your Tywin Lannister. Yeah, I likely lose this. That is... But hopefully I don't lose the unit. I'll just retreat backward. Yeah, three to one. Can't win that, so... Uh, I'll get rid of... You know what? I can get rid of that zero card. Burn one of his orders. Set him tem temporarily backward and, and just annoy him if you were a human player. Get that influence there. Ha. Oh, the Queen of Thorns. She is a thorny one. So I think the, uh, the sigil, we've got the rose on a green field here for the Tyrells and uh, we've also got their their house motto is growing strong so I guess that's why we need to grow strong here and here's the battle come on oh yeah that's a five I think Baratheon is going to suffer the wrath oh boy six to six nuts I'm gonna lose it but you know what that means I get all my cards back my armies are consolidated and he is going to pay the ultimate price right now when I defend Highgarden. I've got that extra support there. That is fantastic. And I've got my high card. Mace Tyrell, and he just lost his Tywin Lannister, so he cannot beat me. Sir Gregor Clegane, I'm afraid it is over for you. My ladies, the king has been most impressed with House Tyrell's friendship and Lady Marjorie's beauty. He proposes a marriage alliance. Okay, I've won that for them. Excellent. You see, my dear, from traitor to queen with only a small bit of bloodshed in between. That's very optimistic. Well, if this video was helpful to you at all, please consider giving us a subscription and a like. And uh, check out some of our other challenges. Uh, we're beating them all to show you different ways to do it. And as I say, I'll just throw in the extra footage here now of that weird ending. And in the comments, just let me know um, if, if there was something I, I'm not seeing there that went on that, that caused me to win that. So thanks for joining us and come again when you can stay a little longer.
if you have any idea what happened there, if it was just a glitch, which I suspect it was, great. But if I missed something, just let me know because uh, I was a little bit uh, flummoxed by that. Thanks for joining us at Legendary Tactics. If you got value out of this video, please consider giving us a subscription and a like. And thanks so much for your time.